Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another video. So if there's anything I love, it's Star Wars deleted scenes. I'm pretty sure that beep is down. Oh yes, 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 you're right. Beep is up. Whether we have footage of them, still images, I love watching them, dissecting them, just hearing about them and speculating how they may have changed the Star Wars story they're part of. Well, it's only been five days since the Acolytes came to an end, and Manny Jacinto just revealed the way the show originally was going to finish. For one thing, the Plagueis cameo was going to be at the very end. <laughs> but did you know Osha and Chimera were about to get, let's just say, a bit more sensual than just holding hands? No, not the full boom shakalaka, come on, they're not gonna go that far, but they almost shared a kiss. Honestly, I'm not even surprised. If they had left this in, this would have just added to the countless, infinite memes that have come out of this show, and so you're probably wondering, how did it go down? Well, here is what Jacinto said. There's a version we filmed where Osha and the stranger kiss, but we felt it may not have been earned at that moment. I think it was just too early on. The stranger just killed a bunch of her friends, and she just killed her father-like figure, so for them to have this sensual moment just didn't feel like it was appropriate. I mean, he's definitely right. It's just on the cutting room floor, but I suggested, maybe not the kiss, but what about holding hands? And he elaborates, if they do get a second season, we might see more of this connection between them, more of the physicality and passion. Like I say, they took Obi-Wan's line very seriously for this show, your father was seduced by the dark side of the Force. <laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. I can see where Anakin saw the appeal. Are you going to me? I would certainly like to. The seduction of the dark side of the Force, which I guess Leslie Headland wanted to be a kiss. I'm so glad they didn't do this. We didn't need it. And it's not even the passion or the romance, that's the issue, we've had plenty of it in Star Wars. The bizarre writing for the character of Osha made it difficult to always know what she wanted. So for example, after episode 6, we were all having debates. Is she in love? Is there romance? Is it anger that she's feeling, with nothing behind it? So, in the final episode when they hold hands, it didn't feel like a natural progression. And Manny Jacinto has a point. A kiss wouldn't have been warranted. The handhold, I believe was enough. And I often think about the way Osha and Chimera are very similar in a way to Rey and Ben. Their dynamic in The Last Jedi was certainly a strong influence on this relationship in The Acolyte. But I would say Chimera has a very different temperament to Kylo Ren. And I would say this meme explains it best. My Jedi crush keeps rejecting me. I don't know, man. Have you tried not yelling at her? The memes for the Acolytes were brilliant. If you only knew the power of one, the power of two, oh. the power of many. I wonder how fans are going to react to this. Do you think they should have kissed? Was hand holding enough? Now in fairness, if they do make a second season, they can expand their relationship, but they need to make it complex because we've seen other Sith relationships and have a lot of twists and turns. The ones that come to mind, Darth Malgus and Elena. During the Old Republic, he fell in love with a Twi'lek slave, Elena Daru. Despite trying to reject these feelings, Malgus found himself falling in love, and while she was in servitude to him, they fought together against the Republic. But his commitment to the Sith led him to killing her. He was scared of his love and perceived it as weakness. And this is the same dilemma with Osha and Chimera. She eventually will try to overthrow him to gain the favour of Plagueis. This is something Leslie recently alluded to. I also think of Darth Talon falling in love with her dark Padawan Cade Skywalker. Star Wars Legacy by John Ostrander and Janda Sema took place in an era in the Star Wars Legends timeline that was 100 years further in the future than what was previously explored, specifically 130 to 138 ABY. In the comics, we see the two characters go from enemies, to master and apprentice, to lovers, and back to enemies, after Cade betrays the Sith. It was one of the most intense and lethal relationships the galaxy ever knew, 
So if The Acolytes does get a second season, relationships between Force users, specifically on the dark side, were complex. And to me, the relationship between Chimera and Osha felt very Twilight. My biggest gripe with the season was not enough focus on the Sith, as a group hiding away preparing the grand plan. The friction between one another, especially when you're talking about the awkward position of Acolyte. There is this rule of two, Master and Apprentice. The Acolyte is trying to replace the Apprentice. And during this time, a century before the Grand Plan would be enacted by Palpatine, that should have been an intriguing expansion on Plagueis. So like I say, maybe Season 2. Now, on a less jovial note, Manny Jacinto was asked about the negative reviews, the fan reaction to the Acolyte, and how it affected him. He told GQ, I have mixed feelings all around. There's a lot of love, which is great, but when someone doesn't like it, it's that one comment that kind of just gets to you a little bit. And like I say, my dear friends, despite my criticisms, I think the actors did the best they could with what they were given. Manny Jacinto and Lee jung Je amongst the best. And alluding to what they say is, quote, a very vocal part of the fandom, it's a cycle. With everything that's come out since the original trilogy, there is always a very passionate group that doesn't like change, that wants the same thing they experienced when they were kids, only now they've grown up and their taste has matured, and they're more critical about art and the world, and then they are just more precious about the things that they experienced when they were younger. Now, nostalgia is definitely a big factor, but I don't think you can just write off all criticism of a show like this and just say Star Wars has moved on and evolved. There are absolutely elements of the show that could have worked, but the execution fell flat, whether it's the direction, certain creative choices, structuring and pacing. I don't think it's simply if you don't like it, your taste as a fan has changed. We've seen instances of Star Wars change, progress, evolve, but it still needs to stay anchored in George's message of hope. The hero's journey. We see this in things like Andor, Rogue One, Mando, Ahsoka which introduced a brand new galaxy, dark Jedi like Balin and Shin, evolving George Lucas's story, bringing new ideas to it, but not deviating so far that they're unrecognisable. And I know, art is subjective, some fans do see those tropes in the Acolyte. And sure, there is a lot of negativity in the fandom, but generally speaking, I wouldn't say criticism of the Acolyte comes down to the fact that fans just want the same thing. We're a notoriously difficult fandom to please, that much is true. That being said, there have been moments where we've rejoiced over new projects that dared to do something different. I'm not afraid of change, and that's why I think if they get different people to work on a second season, if they progress the story focus on Plagueis, the Sith, that story could have a very good chance. That's just my perspective. What do you guys think? Let me know down below.